H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys supports 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus. One-time pay, lifetime access to live classes and videos. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For free demo class, visit h2kinfosys.com. Okay guys, so let's start our session today. So yesterday we had seen like what exactly is the produced model on a very very high level with one or two examples and also we had discussed about what are the phases, what are, at least what are the important phases that were there in MapReduce. That is the map phase and there is one more intermediate phase called as shuffle and sort. We will discuss much more on it once we enter into, I mean, once we do a deeper dive on map reduce. And the last one would be the reducer from where we use it to get the final output. Right? So, children, let's start with another example. And I will be using the same example for. Yeah, one second. Okay. So I will be using the same example and slowly I will add all the complexities to the same example till the end of our map reduce session. Okay. So we can proceed once with one simple example. So that we will be much more it will be much more easier for us to understand. Okay, let's take a Let's take a case like, I want to know like, um, okay. So let's take a cards example. We all know about the car, about the cards game, right? I think most of one, most of us have been very much interested on this also. So can anyone answer the answer this? How many cards will be there totally? Super. Rahul is too fast. <laughs> okay, fifty-two cards, right? And how many ships are there? Good. So definitely again Rahul is going to answer this question as well. <laughs> So now my question is I want to know or I want to write So what will be my expected output for this? So what is my expected output guys? 13. So maybe it will look like Uh, 
yep, comma 13. Diamond comma 13. Right? So something will be like this. So if you try to understand this in the form of key value pairs, my expected output would be key and the number of count of e card, each card. That is the value 30. Again the key and the count of each card. Again 13. So it will be club comma 13, diamond comma 13, heart comma 13 and spade comma 13. So this is what my expected output is. But still my input to a mapper is always a text file because if you think from the client end, the end user will always give you an input file and he wants to get the expected output in a maybe some other output file, right? So everything will goes in the form of files only. So let's imagine that I have a card, I have an input file as XG maybe of some 240 MB okay so let's imagine this is, this is the way so if my input text file is of 240 MB uh, how many blocks it will be divided to this cards.txt file should be divided into some number of blocks, right? So if my default block size is 64 MB, so then how many blocks I would get? Can anyone answer me? It's a well-known concept for us, right? So we have discussed about this in HDFS concepts about the block size, how many blocks it will be divided into and all those. So, can anyone give me a guess? Come on guys. Okay. So, Rahul is giving me an answer of 3.75. That is good, but there is nothing like 0.75 block or something. So, definitely there will be a block of 64 MB only, but still, right. So totally four blocks, you will be having four blocks. So let me draw it as well. So suppose this is my input file, right? Now, my input file is divided into four blocks. Maybe one. So let's see our slide. So yesterday we have discussed it till here, right? Mapper phase is the first phase in the MapReduce job and mapper phase is responsible for transforming the input. So my mapper phase will read this 64 MB block, right? And then the mapper reads the data in the form of key value pairs. 
so let's take as so for each of each of the block there will be running a map task behind it right so as we are having four blocks here there will be four mappers running for each of the block uh, to be speak frankly there is no mapper class that needs to be executed for each of the block there is something else and on top of it a map class will be reduced on it I mean a map class will be executed on it so it's not block it is something else but as of now let us assume it is uh, for a block itself maybe in next 10 to 15 minutes I will explain you those topics but right now just imagine that we are running a map task on each of the block so definitely I will be having a map class here so let me draw it as well So guys, you are able to understand this, right? So there are four map tasks that were executed, that were going to be executed parallelly that is mapper 1 2 3 and 4 the mapper reads the data in the form of key value pairs it outputs zero or more key value pairs so uh, later on we can see the cases like where we will get zero key value pairs also but right now we will see the most convenient way or the most straightforward way later on we can see the negative cases as well or some other exceptional cases but for now we will see the right cases so the map will be having or it will be reading in the form of key values only so the mapper 1 will read the 64 MB of block in the form of key value pairs only but again there are different ways of reading this 64 MB of block in key value pairs so there are different ways but let's imagine that mapper 1 is reading 64 MB of block in some way and it is able to understand it in the form of key value pairs because everything in Hadoop or everything in MapReduce in our cluster it can be understood only in the form of key value pairs only even though you write a pick program or you, even though you write a high program as well internally it will be converted into MapReduce and once it is converted to MapReduce it has to it, the cluster can only understand the key value format itself so that is a topmost priority and important thing that we have to understand so the map will have and some input key and value and it will generate some intermediate key and value list so let's imagine that this is giving me output as club comma one so these are intermediate values right so my mapper has been executed and it has generated the output in this form something like this okay and again
and so on. Okay. Now you are, uh, are you able to map me? Uh, just let me know if anyone is not able to understand these things, okay? Because this is very important. So, my MapReduce is reading the input in the form of key value pairs. And if you see here, the output of map is list of K2, V2. So, there is something else or something new list when it compares to the input called as k2 comma v2 my input to map 1 is k1 comma v1 and the map is generating a list of outputs which is the intermediate output right so my mapper 1 is giving outputs in this way the first one just consider the first one club 1 heart 1 spade 1 club 1 again diamond 1 and all those things so the club is the key here and the one is a value of count so for each word or each line it is reading it is getting this output in the form of key value pair once everything is have, have been distributed in the sense all the mappers have been executed there is some phase called as shuffle and sort right After this, again, So finally, my intermediate data have been passed to a reducer, right? What happens with this shuffle and sort is, shuffle and sort collects the output of each of the maps and they will aggregate independently based on the key values. So after my shuffle and sort is finished, I will have the output in the form of 